Are you one of those business owners who's made a video for your business, put it on your website, and then wondered what else to do with it? Excellent. Then wonder no more, as today's guest has 30 ideas to make sure your video gets seen by as many of the right peeps as possible. It's a high exposure episode 473 of the award winning Small Business Big Marketing Podcast. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Reed. And welcome back to your weekly dose of marketing education. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing to build that really beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. And that's exactly what we do around here. Plus, you can join for free our Facebook group to discuss the learnings that you've had from each episode. Share them with other like-minded business owners. Just search for the Small Business Big Marketing Tribe on Facebook. Big episode today. Video marketing specialist Jeff Anderson walks us through 30 ideas to get any video you create for your beautiful business seen by as many people as possible, as often as possible as well. Another motivated listener wins big in this week's monster prize draw, and I've got some big news about next week's guest. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dreaming from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. A little bit excited today. Just did a really good interview that will appear in about two or three weeks' time, and it's left me feeling just a little bit up, a little bit inspired. But I'll tell you about that next week. Righto, hands up if you've ever produced a video for your business. Excellent. Well done to you. Now, Keep your hand up if you've posted that video somewhere on your website, then wondered why it's not getting the views or engagement you'd hoped for. Just what I expected. 95% of hands remained up. I can't actually see the hands, guys. It's just like, you know, I'm playing with you. Well, herein lies the problem. You finally find the courage to appear in a video for your precious business. You invest precious time and money into having it produced or maybe you've even shot it yourself, but then all you do is post it on your website, hoping it'll magically take care of itself. Well, as you've discovered, it won't. But that's all about to change, thanks to video marketing expert Jeff Anderson of Sonic Sight, who's been producing marketing videos for businesses and schools since 1993. <laughs> wow, was video available back then? <laughs> Yeah, I think it was. He's even written two books on the topic, Shoot Me Now and Watch Me Now. You're going to need a notebook for this one. In the first half, we talk about some tips and tricks to optimising your video production. Then, in the second half of this chat, Jeff shares 30 ways to get every video you produce seen. Pins at the ready. Jeff Anderson, welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Uh, thank you for having me, Timbo. I've been listening to your show for years, so I'm very excited to be on it. You're the one. <laughs> it was me. Yes, it was. <laughs> I knew there was one out there listening. Hey, Jeff, um, let's start off. I want to just talk about why video. What do you love about video as a marketing medium? Uh, well, what I love about it is the way that everybody else has woken up to it because I've been making videos for nearly 30 years. And I, when I think back, you know, what was I doing 30 years ago? And it was VHS tapes and 15-minute productions that you'd make somebody sit in a boardroom to watch. Uh, but it's great to see the way it's been adopted these days. And it's just, it's everywhere. I mean, all the platforms are using them. Um, everybody's looking for video. And there's, there's stats to back it up. 96% of consumers say that videos help them with their buying decisions. 87% of businesses use video as a marketing tool. 77% of consumers believe that companies that create videos are more engaged with them. So they're hmm. really, you know, consumers are looking for video content as a way to learn about companies and their products and services. Video marketing feels expensive, is it? 
Well, it can be. Um, I mean, we, we try to find a, a solution for companies where it's not that expensive. But, of course, it's never been easier to make video content. When I first started, you needed uh, $100,000 to buy the cheap computer-based editing system. Um, and then you were looking at about, you know, 30, 30 grand upwards for a camera. Of course, these days, you know, you've got a high-definition camera that you carry around in your pocket these days on your phone, mm. which is actually extraordinary what it can do. And I think people sometimes underestimate just how good a phone is. Uh, and then you've got you know iMovie built into your as software already preloaded on your Mac when you buy it, or you can get you know cheap um, software for a PC. So it's never been easy. The, the entries to barrier uh, the barriers to entry have uh, have dropped away completely. So anybody can do it. And even the clients I work with, where we're making you know we're on annual contracts with them, making videos for them every day. I talk to them about making their own content content as well because I don't think. Everything has to be done professionally. I think there's opportunity there to make a range of quality types of videos and people are happy to watch those regardless of, of how they're produced. Well, well, I think that's really interesting. A p- previous guests on this show who have been video marketing specialists have gone over those sort of the videos that every small business should have. I want to get your take on what you think the top five videos are and then just a little, a quick discussion around strategic videos where you do spend some dough versus tactical videos, which you do on the hop. So first of all, Jeff, top five videos every small business should have? Number one for me is a case study video. And I think these are great because it's actually your customers talking about your product or services from their point of view. So they're not obviously selling your product or service, but what it does, it really captures the imagination of the viewers because they can relate very much to that situation. And they can say, yeah, I've got that problem. I need that service. I want that solution. I want that outcome. And so I take customers on a four-step process with the case studies. I say, Uh, What was the problem that you were having? What was the product or service that was provided? How has that helped transform your business or your life, depending on what it is? And then how are you now feeling as a result? So that's that's the case study. That's number one. I think it's a no-brainer. And it's number two. Number two, five mistakes. Um, So talk about the sort of things that people um, make a mistake when they when they're using your product or service or in your industry. And the beauty of that is. It just shows sort of the layers of complexity of what you provide that people don't know they don't know. So they get to see it. It also builds credibility and trust with you because you're giving away this free, helpful information. And another beauty of this is it actually selects out the people that are not going to be suitable for you. So you might get some people think, oh, I can do it myself. Great. I'm off and running. They're the ones you don't want to necessarily be working with anyway. So that's a great way to build um, trust and, and rapport. Number three? Uh, a pitch video. So that's that's about addressing what um, the problem is that you solve for your customer. So just remember, it's not about you. Uh, people get really tempted to talk about their own, mm. you know, this is what we do, blah, blah, blah. And you really need to keep asking yourself, why does this matter to the customer? So start out with talking about what the problem is and then how your product or service solves that problem and, and how you're going to be the ideal solution for them. Like that one. Number four? Every every video a small business owner should have? I believe uh, a really powerful one is what I call a rapport building video. So this is where you tell people why you do what you do and why you love doing it, why, why it gets you out of bed. I had a customer who um, told me he got a phone call from a, from a new client saying, yep, I'm ready to work with you. I want you to build these patios out in our backyard. And he said, oh, okay, how did you hear about it? I said, well, look, I've, I've watched your video and I can trust you. Um, so it builds that, you know, that rapport, that trust, because people understand who you are, what drives you, what motivates you, and they can they can like you without even meeting you. So it's a great way to um, to get people on board. Yeah, I love that. Basically, you know, why do you do what you do? And number five, Jeff? Uh, well, a product video. So something that explains the features of your product or service So and the value that it brings. So it's a little bit different from a pitch video, which is more about the overarching solution service you provide. This is then narrowing down to some of the different products or solutions that you have and just unpacking those and letting people know the value and the benefits of, of getting those. So I guess that those five ones that you've highlighted, Jeff, are what I would call strategic videos, ones that you do once, they're evergreen, you put them on your website and you're going to show us, actually going to give us a lot of places where you can put them and get exposure for them. But there's also the opportunity, isn't there, to do tactical videos where you might, um, let's say you're a real estate agent and you go and provide a valuation of someone's home, the idea of actually getting out in the, the driveway at the end of that meeting and doing a quick video saying thank you, tactical video, something you could do on your phone. You see a role for those as well? 
Oh, look, absolutely, absolutely. There's so many ways. I mean, I, I talk to people these days about saying getting out, get over the fact that videos are, are a promotional tool because videos are now are a business communication tool. They can be used in any form of communication that you're having. So, you know, just relax about it. Yes, have these, you know, the high-end uh, promotional type content, the evergreen content, but also look for other opportunities for these, um, you know, just just engaging with your community in different ways. Of course, if you're doing a particular campaign, if you're raising funds for something, I had some friends of mine that were um, raising funds for a men's table where they uh, wanted to go not for profit. So they needed to raise $10,000. So I helped them out with a few videos on that. And one of them was, um, you know, the ask, explaining what they were doing and why they needed the money. Mm. Um, and then at the end of it, when they raised, they, they were looking for 10000 they ended up getting 19000 um, They did a thank you video because once you've raised the money, you need to then thank people seven times. And so I said, to them, look, we need to do a thank you video for them. Uh, and the point, the important point about that video was it was only a thank you. It wasn't like what else you can do to help or how you can stay in touch or who you can refer or if you can spare some more money. It was very much about just keeping it clean as a, as a quick thank you and that's all it needed to be in that, in that stage. What are the key mistakes to avoid when producing videos? I'm sure there are many, but just some of the sort of top ones. Well, I, I break it down into two areas. So technical mistakes and also strategic mistakes. So technically... Get your framing right. What I talk about, you know, if you're shooting somebody's head, make sure the head's at the top of the frame. It's really, uh, you see a lot of people, they put the head in the middle of the frame and there's all this dead space above them. You see old photos where you've got the room and they've, yeah. So just keep about, think about having the, the photo at the, uh, the head at the top of the frame. I'm a big fan of uh, widescreen videos. I know a lot of people are shooting portrait videos these days, um, which are great when you're looking on the phone, but not much good for anywhere else. So you're limiting your opportunities if you're, if you're only shooting it in portrait. Um, obviously, audio is really important. Having said that, um, you know, captions are really vital uh, as well. Maybe we can talk about that a bit later. But uh, ideally, get get good audios. Make sure you're listening to the background noise. You know, are there trucks? Is there traffic? Are there children screaming? Um, planes flying overhead, wind, whatever. Just be aware of that. Um, and if need be, listen back to it after you've recorded to make sure that you've got it clean. If you haven't, do it again. Uh, lighting, you know, avoid bright bright backgrounds that mm. silhouette the person. You don't want them to look like they're on some kind of witness protection scheme. Uh, <laughs> and keep the, keep the camera steady. You, you don't want people being distracted by the technology that's, that's trying to deliver that message. So just be aware of that. Um, and also, once you finish filming, make sure you back up the footage. You don't want to end up losing it because you've wiped over it because you, you, know, you thought you had it, but you didn't. And strategically, some of the mistakes that people make, I think, is they're not perhaps really clear on what their purpose is, what they're trying to achieve. I had someone the other day ring me up and saying, oh, you know, we want to film this conference that we're involved with and we want to record all these sessions. And I said, sure, we can do that for you. And then, you know, why are you actually doing that? And there was a real lack of clarity about what they actually wanted and what they actually really needed was just a, a short sort of two-minute highlights of the whole conference because that's what they'd end up using. They realised no one's going <clears> to <throat> watch those sessions again. So be clear on what your um, your purpose is. And, Jeff, you, you talk about starting strong and smart with your video. What do you mean by that? Look, people's attention online these days is very limited. It's, it's If you've got their attention, you really need to respect that and go with it quickly. So... The days of having, you know, a 3D animated logo that goes on for 10 seconds have well and truly passed us by. <laughs> I, I've I've clicked on videos that I really wanted to watch and after 10 seconds or after five yeah. seconds of just watching this logo unwind and you just go, yeah, I'm good. I'm out of here. I, I think what happened was there were some services, uh, you know, maybe five years ago that were offering 10 ten dollar intro trailers or you know intro recorded intros for your videos and it looked amazing because oh, yeah. uh, up until then that was really the domain of the the big business and now us small business guys could have these funky trailers but sometimes we get carried away with the bright shiny object and forget that we're actually producing this uh in order for someone to watch enjoy entertain be educated Absolutely. And so on that, you want to you want to understand why the people have, have tuned in, you know, and get to that point quickly. So, you know, if there's a problem that you're solving for them, if there's something they want to learn how to do, state, you know, state that straight up front and get into it. As far as putting your logo in it, sure, put your logo in it, but maybe put it as a watermark on the screen or when the supers come up or at the end of the video. But don't indulge yourself at the start with a big rambling logo just get to the point as quickly as you possible and give them a hook something that's going to get them engaged with you know wanting to watch more you actually say uh forget about your branding well what i mean there is manage it so 
yes, have your brandy, but put it in the right place at the right time. Don't, you know, put it at the front because uh, I'm sure you'll agree, Tim, that the person who most worries about their logo is the person whose logo it is. Everybody else wants to get on with what, what the value <laughs> is that you've got to give and that's the stuff you want to be showing off. There's a great video. I haven't seen it for a long time, but when I worked in advertising many years ago, um, one of the requests from every client and I would I looked after clients, Julux, Uncle Toby's, uh, Mercedes Benz, and one of their requests whenever you presented a concept was, could you make the logo a bit bigger, please? And um, there is actually <laughs> a parody video of that with a band singing a song called Make the Logo Bigger or something. I'll try and find it and put it in the show notes. It was a lot of fun. Um, what about a call to action? Should every video have a call to action, Jeff? No, not all the time. It it really, that comes down to your strategy and what you're trying to achieve and what the purpose of the video is. So, you know, for example, that one I was talking about before, that thank you video for that fundraising just needed to be a thank you. It didn't, you didn't want to taint it by saying and do this or do that. So, you know, obviously work out what you're trying to achieve from it, what the whole purpose is. Sometimes it's just building, um, you know, a relationship with somebody and you just want it to be that on its own. Obviously other times, you know, you need to – what I talk about in my new book is um, – knowing what the next step is you want people to take after watching your video and being really clear on that because, yes. you know, it can be really tempting people just put a video up, think, great, I've done my job. And it's like, no, no, what do you actually want them to achieve? Because watching the video is just part of the process. The step you want them to do is what's going to happen after they've watched the video. So having clarity around that is really important. And I think that's really important, Jeff, because um – the, the obvious um, place to land is that every video you produce, you want it to end in a sale uh, or an inquiry. But maybe that's unreasonable. Maybe the call to action is watch the next video, as you say, or you know do do another step that's leading them down a path of inquiry and hopefully purchase at the end of it. But sometimes we don't want to rush these things and 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 take the marketing um, process a bit slower if you like, the sales process a bit slower. Yeah, and sometimes it's about building a community. It's about just nurturing yes. that community, keeping them engaged, and then eventually um, leveraging that for sales down the, down the track. You mentioned captions earlier. How important are captions? More and more important, pretty much uh, essential. I mean, at least 85% of videos are watched these days mute uh, online. And so with our videos, we provide our, our clients adding captions to them is just a no-brainer. It's part of the service. And uh, it's, it's you know, really easy to do these days. Uh, What's the easiest way to add captions to a video? Uh, you go to rev.com. Um, $1 a minute, they charge you, US dollar. And they turn it around in a couple of hours, depending on the duration of the video. And it's, it's pretty accurate. They might be, you need to go through it and just check yeah. it. But for my money, it's the you know best easiest way to best way to spend money um, on the return on investment. It's they do it themselves, and it's it's bang. You've got you've got your uh, captions file which you can upload onto your your LinkedIn video or your Facebook video. For some of the platforms, you need to actually burn it onto the video, so you need to go back into the edit suite to um, to actually put it on the video, so it's there all the whole time. Which is actually what I prefer to do because you've got control of it then, and everybody sees it every time it goes out. So you've got your captions on your video, Jeff, which are which are essentially subtitles. What about the transcription? Is that you then? Is it best practice to post that into the description that YouTube or Vimeo or any of these these um, hosts allow you to do? Yeah, absolutely. So that's going to help you with your SEO. It's yeah, going to make okay. it easier for people to find your video if they're searching for terms and uh, commentary that you use in the video. It also helps Google understand what the video is about. So when people are searching and it knows, okay, that's a video, it's going to promote video above other other platforms, other media, if it can. So if you make it easy for, for Google to understand what's the content um, by having the, the transcription there, you've got more chance of getting it seen. Just on SEO, we've talked about capturing we talked about transcriptions. Um, there is that that geeky term called metadata, which is basically those fields that, again, YouTube or Vimeo or wherever you're hosting your video allows you to fill out, again, to tell Google and the other search engines that there's a video here and what's it about. And any tips on optimising your metadata? Well, look, obviously, we think about the keywords that are going to uh, most resonate with the, the audience that, that you're promoting it to. Um, another thing to think about all this, though, is also when you're, you're posting your videos online, you're not just putting your video on its, by itself. You're, you've generally got some um, 
uh, it's some text around it explaining what it is and that's really important content and data as well in terms of getting people engaged with your video so you know and that's why you don't need the titles the the big rambling starts because you can explain this video is about this you know click here to watch so i call that sort of the packaging that goes around part of your video and it's a big part of it because wherever you're posting your video these days whether it's on a website youtube facebook instagram it's going to have some kind of information around it. So that's where you can actually get people in, explain what the video is. You want to keep it to, you know, I don't know, 60 words or something or less, mm -hmm. and that's going to help them get engaged straight away. Jeff, you've shot a bunch of videos. Um, where do you host them? YouTube, you've mentioned Vimeo, there's Wistia. I'm sure there are other places. Where do you, where do you upload these videos to? I like YouTube and Vimeo, and in fact, I use both of them um, myself from time to time. These days, I'm actually using Vimeo uh, as an archiving way of keep managing all our videos because it's a great way for us to do it. It's got some great features in terms of um, you can actually sell your videos on Vimeo as well. You can package them up in collections. Um, YouTube is really good, and, and there's no reason why you can't have them on both. Um, YouTube is great because it's such a powerful search engine. People go there to specifically look up products or services or, or have problems solved. So if you've got your videos on YouTube, um, it's, you know, it's, it's got great search power. So either of those are great. Um, I don't tend to use Wistia. I, I know it's got some great analytic data. Vimeo these days has great analytic information in it as well. So what, what do you think about the idea of embedding a YouTube video on a website? Because with that comes all the YouTube branding, visual branding. Do you think it looks cheap or is it completely acceptable? It used to be a bit better because you can control um, more the, the related videos it shows afterwards, but I believe it's now gone and um, taken control of that back so that you have to see these related videos mm -hmm. so it keeps, keeps them going. Look, I think Vimeo provides a much cleaner um, interface for that. You can actually nominate which parts of the menu you want to show with Vimeo so you can turn a whole range of things on or off. Mm. Uh, so it does give you a lot more control. You can change the colour scheme of Vimeo as well, so you can have it in your own branding. So that gives us a nice a nice look as well. So, yeah, Vimeo is certainly a, a much cleaner, nicer-looking thing. <sighs> look, but people understand what YouTube is. They know what you've done. I don't think, um, uh, you know, you, Vimeo is cleaner, but people know what YouTube is and they get it. It's a great thing that you've recognised, Jeff, in writing this book because I am sure the majority of business owners listening to this chat um, have gone and created at least one video. They've put it on their website or they've put it on their blog or maybe they've just uploaded it to YouTube and done nothing else with, with it. And it's that classic thing where you go, I'll get that video produced and then my work is done. But clearly that is not the case. You need to share those videos far and wide in order to give them um, an extended life and an impactful life. And I love the fact that you have created 30 ways to share your videos, which you and I are going to power our way through because... You know, if, if people implement these ideas, that little video they've created is going to get a whole lot more traction. So, Jeff Anderson, over to you. 30 ways to share your marketing videos. <laughs> okay, number one, host it on YouTube. No brainer. Number two, host it on Vimeo as well. Include it in your email signature. This is a really great mm. way to get it out to every time you send an email out to somebody. There's a video attached to it. If they're using, if it's a YouTube link and they're using Gmail or Google Apps, it'll they'll be able to watch it within the email itself. Just on that, so is, do, you, do you put it? Do you literally put the link to your video in your email signature, or do you embed the video into your email signature? You could embed it, yeah. Or alternatively, what you can do is create a little graphic with a play button on it, um, with the link to that. So it'll it'll um, open up and play. Mm -hmm. So as I say, if, if it's a Google Apps or Gmail, it'll YouTube, it'll play within it. Otherwise, you can um, it'll open it up in YouTube and they can watch it there. Okay. Um, embed it on your website. So do these other things first. I have people who say, oh, I need a video, but, you know, my website's not going to be ready for three months. And it's like, you don't – your website is just one of 30 ways to share your videos. You don't have to wait for your website to get your video out there. So – and I think that mentality – and this is why I wrote the book, you know, the first book, Shoot Me Now, was about how to make videos. This book is about, well, what to do with it once you've got your video. Because I have seen my clients just, they, they don't, you know, they, 
they've 20 views after three months. I think, what are you doing? It's not mm. working. Mm. Um, don't hide it on your website. So make sure you've got it prominently. I've, I've seen ones that have just been buried. You need to be Indiana Jones to find it, and that's not <laughs> the whole purpose of it. You want to make it front and center. Can I just pause you on that one? So don't hide it on your website. Agree. But it does depend on... I mean, do I therefore assume that you put all videos on the home page? Clearly not. And one of the things um, with a website is you really want people not to just land on your home page, but some of these longer tail searches are going to take people deep inside your website, um, maybe to like a secondary or tertiary page. It's still okay to have videos there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I encourage people to have a video on every page that they've got on their website, but just make it prominent. Um, and, you know, just be aware that, you know, people are going to be looking for this and, and make it easy for them to find it. So try to, you know, if you can post it to the top of the page above the fold, you're going to get more engagement with it as well. So, um, yes, definitely have them all over the page. Um, the, the, I think the days of having a, a a menu option for button for videos. Mm. I don't think that's relevant anymore. Videos should just be part of the whole makeup of the of the content. So it yep. should just be there with regardless. Um, use clear thumbnails as links to your website. So you know have a, have an engaging image that's relevant from the video um, to get people to to click on it. Tell people about it in your newsletter. If you're sending out newsletters, let them know. Share it around. Don't don't hide it under a bushel. Let people know it's out there. No, I, want to, I just want to comment on a couple of those. Uh, Clear video thumbnails as links on your website. Um, I think that's a really important one, one that many don't do. So when you upload a video to YouTube or Vimeo, um, that, th- those um, platforms automatically drop in a thumbnail that will be the positional image that sits in the little frame of your video. And sometimes it's a shocker, but you actually have complete yeah. control over it. And in fact, there is a whole science to what, uh, how to create a thumbnail that encourages people to click. So I'd encourage people to kind of look into that because it really is a, a key factor in whether someone's going to click on your video. Um, put it in your newsletter. Love that one. And I'll be back to you. And then back to you, Jeff. Create stories about your video. Yeah. So if there's, you know, something that happened when you were producing the video, use that as a reason to say to people, hey, you know, I had a great time hanging out, shooting this the other day. This happened. You can check out the results here. So just create a bit of narrative around it to give give people a reason to, to look on it. Mm-hmm. Um Obviously, post it on Facebook. Uh, no brainer. As I said before, you know, have some text, have some information around it, so that there's um, a reason for people to to click and find out more. Post it on Facebook groups, and this is really uh, a really powerful way to get more engagement with it. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but you tend to find more engagement within groups. So nice. if you've got groups that are uh, relevant to that content, post it in there. Once again, give some story around it. Post it on LinkedIn. Uh, same thing again, um, and you can write an article on LinkedIn if you want. You can um, share it with the groups on LinkedIn again. You know, get better targeted engagement when you put it within the groups. Post it on Twitter. Post it on Instagram. Just before you go, uh, just to, before you go on, Jeff, yeah. um, you saying mm. posting it across all those social media platforms, which is a great idea. Just a functional question here: um, Do you what do you grab? Which link do you grab? Do you grab the permalink, for example? Um, if you're in YouTube, do you grab the link at the top of the page, or do you grab the? Do you go to the share button within uh, your YouTube video, and because it's generally a different URL, which one do you? Which one do you post on your social media? Sorry, I should have clarified. Neither. What you do with social media is you upload the raw video file, so the MP4 file. You don't want to put a link to YouTube or Vimeo on the social media platforms because they don't want you sending people away to another platform. They want to keep your audience on their platform. So they're going to promote your video and share it more widely if it's the raw video file that's part of their their infrastructure. So what you want to do is just upload the MP4 file, let it load, and then that's going to get more views because they're going to promote it more actively than if you've gone and uploaded a link. So always best practice is to up, on social media is to upload the raw video file. Awesome. Uh, buffer it, you know, you've got Hootsuite and Buffer apps like that. Obviously, it's an option. Um, they're not great in terms of getting engagement because the um, platforms now are aware that, you know, you're automating the process rather than doing it manually and personally. Uh, but, you know, it's it's another way to get some engagement and get it out there. Um the other thing to think about your video is, is, is there an opportunity to show it live? We do a lot of work with uh, private schools 
and they're often having assemblies or um, school tours where they get to show our videos to a captive audience. And that's a great way to get engagement. And people are more likely to watch the whole thing through than get distracted and click away because they, they can't. So um, live events is, is a great opportunity to showcase your videos. The other thing, of course, is you could organise events if you've got an opportunity to, if you've got a particular, particularly strong video and you've got a, um, an audience that it's going to resonate with, you can use that as part of your campaign. One of the things I really love is pre-meeting introductions. So if you've got a meeting tomorrow with somebody, you booked the meeting a couple of weeks ago, you're hoping they've remembered it, you know, it looks like they're, they're going to, you know, um, expect to see you. Send them the video, you know, your pitch video or your five mistakes video or whatever it is beforehand the day before and say, hey, listen, looking forward to catching up with you tomorrow. Here's a little video which just gives you a bit of an under overview of what we're about and what we do. Um, and I really look forward to hearing um, how we can help you. I, I, think that's a, I think that's a great one. And I think the idea of, again, it's personal it has a high perceived value doing something like that. And, and if you could add to that, say, hey, listen, watch this video before we meet tomorrow. But even just doing a little tactical video saying, hey, you know, it's Tim here and really looking forward to, you wouldn't say Tim if it's not your name, if you know what I mean, but it's Tim here and I'm really <laughs> looking forward to catching up tomorrow to discuss blah, blah, blah. Again, it just puts you back on the radar and shows a little bit of care. Well, it's, it's professional and the real beauty of this is you then go to the meeting and you don't have to talk about you and your services because hopefully the videos unpack that for them. They've liked it, they understand what you do and they want to engage with you. So you can spend the whole, miss whole meeting listening to them, understanding what their needs are and addressing those and you're going to get much more, you know, better outcome from that. Love it. Uh, next one, number 19 we're up to, by the way, be mobile ready. Yeah, so make sure you've got your video on your phone. I mean, these days with easy access to data, it's not as relevant as it used to be. But, you know, if you've got a, an important video on your phone or your iPad or your computer, when you're out and about and something comes up, you can quickly bring it up, show it to somebody, say, oh, yeah, look, this is what we do, blah, blah, blah. So, um, or, you know, or at least have access to your YouTube channel or your, um, your videos online so that you can bring those up quickly while you're there when a situation arises. Love it. Um, and, of course, targeted marketing with your um, your advertising. Um, you know, with Facebook, you can really go and be quite specific who you want to see your videos. They, they've they shown to have great engagement uh, with the ads and it really does convert. So it's a more expensive way with advertising, but the conversions are much higher. So it's certainly um, worth looking at from that perspective. Um you can do the same with YouTube advertising, promote it, let people know it's out there when they're on YouTube and same with LinkedIn advertising. The other thing, the other way to get your videos out to people is to have um, a way for them to download it. So we can do that easily with Vimeo because you can have a download link on Vimeo. So as you send it out, people can just download it or you can send it on Hightail or WeTransfer or one of those or Google Drive one of those, um, or Dropbox, one of those um, apps that are out there that enable you to send large files, which you're not going to be able to uh, be attached in an email. But that means they've got it on their desktop for whatever they need it. And Jeff, I really love the idea of um, sending content one one to one. So often we create content, and I do this with my podcast. You know, I create an episode, and it goes out to tens of thousands of people, which is great. But I also love the idea of when I'm speaking to a business owner, say if I'm speaking, giving a keynote um, at a conference, and um, someone puts their hand up and says, "Can you just tell us a little bit more um, about LinkedIn, for example?" Um, I can then say, hey, listen, I've actually done a whole interview with one of the original founders of LinkedIn. Um, can I send you that link? And it's exactly what you're talking about with FTPing um, video files, where you just send one video to one person. It can have a great impact. Well, I think in this day of, of so much automation, when you when somebody receives something which they, they realise is personalised, it you know, it's like getting a letter in the, in, the, in the mail these days. It does cut through mm -hmm. the noise a lot more. So it's certainly worth um, worth looking at that. Number 24, ask your community to share the love. So if you've got people in your community, get them to get engaged with the video um, and share it around. One of the great ways you can get some traction on LinkedIn is if you put a post up there and if you've got a you know select group of a couple of dozen people and you say, hey, listen, I've just shared this. Can you jump on board now? Quickly have a comment, mm. a like and a share. Um, if they all do that pretty quickly, it really um, boosts the engagement with that post and more and more people will see it. So if you can get your, your friends and family to uh, jump on board with uh, content that you're putting out there, you're going to get a better uh, better outcome. 
Um, USBs, you know, easy way. If you want to give somebody something tangible, if, <laughs> DVDs, just in case you don't know, um, I, 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 we don't do we, – we've had some clients say, oh, can you do a DVD? And I said, no, we're not going to do them. We're not, <laughs> we don't do them anymore because nobody's got a DVD player. Nobody wants to – handle a dvd disc so um definitely usb sticks are a much more viable way of doing that if you want to give somebody a tangible thing and you can get the promotional products which will have basically anything you can think of uh that might suit your brand um so you can hand hand out a usb with a video on it and some other information you can have embedded on there as well um develop partner channels partnership channels so who has the same audience as you? So for me, I work with a lot with private schools. We have organisations that might do other advertising or they might do jewellery or whatever. They have the same um, market, same clients, but not necessarily um, same products. So we're able to partner with them and they can support us. They can share our stories. We can share their stories. So look at that. Um, and create a campaign. Um, you know, if you're, message, if you're delivering the message, uh, consider ways to deliver it so it incorporates the video as part of that strategy. Um, you know, if, so if it's an infographic, a stunning visual, um, you can send those out, send the video out as part of that as over, over time. Something that's really important is the idea of sharing it multiple times. A lot of people think, oh, I've posted that, great, my job is yeah. done. But think about television commercials. You don't see a TVC yeah. once. You see it multiple times and it needs to be repeated to sink in. And also you'll see content coming up in your Facebook feed where it, it keeps coming up. You may not watch it the first time. You see it the second time. You see it the third time. You're thinking, what is this? See it the fourth time. You think, okay, I've got to watch this because so many people are sharing it. What, what's the story? So don't think that just sharing it once is enough. Keep sharing it, giving it multiple times, multiple platforms, keep repeating it finding a different angle to share it is a good idea but yeah definitely um don't think that you if you've shared it once the job's done i think that is a really really important point because so often and i find many business owners particularly smaller business owners are almost apologetic and i i've, I've heard this when it comes to email marketing oh i can't send another email out to my database they'll think i'm annoying them or i can't share that video more than once it seems over the top but it's completely um incorrect thinking because as you say the bigger brands they're running these tv ads 30 60 90 times a week um and it is frequency that finally lands the message you know so unless you're lucky enough to get a viral video that sort of takes off by itself you've got to actively actively share it yourself uh number 29 jeff encourage participants to share the video yeah, so this is another great way, and I guess this sort of taps into uh, the influencer concept. But if you've got somebody that's in your video, you might have interviewed them for whatever reason, um, and they've got an audience, ask them to share the video as well. So that may do that every time, but there may be some people you could look, look at that strategically and think, well, let's get this person on there because, you know, Timbo Reed's got, you know, tens of thousands of listeners every week. Let's go and um, uh, get him, talk to him because then he'll share our content for us. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, think a bit strategically around that, but just whoever you've got on there, make sure they share it because you never know who they know, who, who's going to watch it because they've shared it. Love it. And drum roll, well, not really a drum roll, but number 30. So another great uh, great way to get your content in front of people that perhaps wouldn't see it otherwise are these LCD brochures. So these are physical brochures that have a screen in them and you can have your artwork printed on them, um, you can have your message in there and then when they open up this this tangible brochure it plays a video and this is ideal if there's somebody that you really know is going to be an ideal client and they're going to love your product or service but you just can't get through the gatekeepers put one of these in a handwritten envelope with a handwritten note it's going to get in the hands of that person and they're going to look at it and they're not going to throw it away because it, it feels too valuable it's got a little lcd screen in it so can you just clarify that for me you're telling me there's a paper <coughs> brochure that has embedded in it an LCD screen? Well, it's more cardboard well, than card paper, but more yeah, cardboard. It's, it's about half a centimetre thick. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a physical brochure wow. with, a, with a screen in it. So when you open it up, it knows that the video needs to play. It starts playing the video. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just a really – it feels valuable. Depending on the quantities, they, they go from, you know, probably somewhere between $50 and $100, depending on how many you make. Um but, uh, yeah, there, that's a great way to get 
to in front of someone that you wouldn't otherwise get to. Well, there you go. That is thirty ways to share thirty ways to share your valuable marketing videos. Thanks to Jeff Anderson of Sonic Sight. Um, Jeff, um, just on as an aside, you have written your second book now. I love this. You you are a you're an audio visual guy. You've had you know you've been doing it for for decades, and I love the fact that you've gone off and you're building a personal brand and profile through self-publishing. Your first book, Just Shoot Me, was well-named and- No, no, no. Shoot me now. Shoot me. <laughs> Love it. There must be You're a book. You're not the first to do that. Uh, shoot me now. Um, uh, and that was all about video production. Your second one, Watch Me Now, which is is imminently about to be released and people can buy it over at sonicsite.com.au. Um, what, what's self-publishing done for your business, Jeff? Oh, look, it's really- um, it, it arrived at the right time. I-, I first did the uh, Key Person Influence course um, about six years ago. And my business had been going very well, but it was it was just lagging a bit. So that really reinvigorated it. I had a great story of a, a client who rang me up. He was from a government agency. He says, look, I've got a copy of your book um, and we've got a $25,000 video to make. Are you interested? And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm interested. <laughs> so I went in and, met, and he said, oh, but i, I got to tell you, I've got to be honest, I haven't read your book yet. And I thought, well, that's that's fine. Um, so I went and met with him and he, he told me about the project and I, I asked what I thought was a great question. I said, so what are you looking for in a winning tender? And he said, because we've, go, we've got to get three quotes because of the, the value. I said, no problem. What do you, you know, what's going to get, get us across the line? And he said, well, I know you can do it because you're published. <laughs> and wow. I thought, well, that's great, but you haven't even read my book. <laughs> so I think just <laughs> having the book um, immediately positions you as somebody of credibility, uh, as somebody who's, uh, you know, can complete things, I guess, has got a bit of a um, get up and go and, and a bit of an authority, well, literally an authority in a particular area, in a particular topic. Yeah, totally, so, um, totally yeah, it certainly it, it certainly enhanced my, my brand and my profile. And um, I've had a, a previous interview, which I'll put in the show notes, is with um, Australia's leading small business author, Andrew Griffiths, who we talked at length about the power of writing a book and how to self-publish, so worth a listen. Hey, Jeff, um, love your work, mate. Thank you for sharing those 30 ways of sharing videos and also, at the top of this interview, ways to improve the actual videos you're going to produce and um i think that's wonderful so mate all the best with the new book launch and uh we Thank will you, uh we will follow with interest your third book which i'm sure is on the uh the drawing table at some point well there you go video marketing expert jeff anderson of sonic site and jeff has very kindly added to the swag of prizes you can win in the monster prize draw more on that shortly but right now here's what grabbed my attention from that chat with Jeff. Attention grabber number one, I love how Jeff's gone about marketing his own business. Now, we didn't spend a lot of time talking about this, but just the fact that he's written two books on video marketing for business positions him as an expert in his niche. Uh, Another past guest who's done the same is Darren Finkelstein, and I'll put a link in the show notes to how Darren did that. But I find that really interesting. Jeff's an AV guy. Darren sells boats, yet they're using clever marketing, helpful marketing to build their personal brand and their business brand. And Jeff's just done that really well. Attention grabber number two, I love Jeff's advice around, and I quote, starting strong and smart with your video. Now, this isn't dissimilar to the advice we received from past guest Richard Stubbs, who was very big on always leading with your best content. The bottom line here is to avoid long, rambling starts, (laughs) I could learn a bit from that, and cut straight to what's important to the viewer or the listener or the reader. Cut to the chase. We have short attention spans these days. Attention grabber number three. I love Jeff's advice around frequency. Always remember to breathe life back into your videos you create or any other content. Sharing them once on social media just won't cut it. That's what grabbed my attention. Whatever grabbed yours, be sure to block out some time and implement it. Come on down. It's Timbo's Monster Prize Draw. Yes, it's that time of the episode where we reward another motivated listener for taking some serious marketing action, for implementing an idea they've heard on this show into their business. And today's winner is... David Weir of Young Turks 
Barbers. Well done, David. This is what he said. This is how he won. He says, hey, Tim, love the show. Listen to it constantly, and I'm a big subscriber to your idea that concepts from other industries can be applied to your own. So true, so true, David. Too many people skim the podcast subject line and go, oh, that's not for me. I reckon every episode I produce, uh, there's something in it, no matter what your business. But I'm biased. David goes on to say, I'm an architect and my partner Christian is a barber and together we opened our barber shop, Young Turks, in the beachside suburb of Mossman Park. And yes, it's named after a Rod Stewart song. I love that song. Love it. Takes me way back into the 80s. What a great time that was. I digress. David goes on to say the biggest issue we had when we opened was managing all aspects of the business, particularly as I was still running my architecture practice, which was next door. So as we approached our third birthday, we decided to outsource. Now, all our promotional graphics and social media engagement are done by people with more time and better skills good move, Dave. We even went through one of your past sponsors in 99 Designs to find a great graphic designer. I reckon that promo is still there probably if you want to find great graphic designers and get a hundred bucks off. 99designs.com.au forward slash Timbo and you get a hundred bucks off your first brief. Maybe there, may not be. Now we get to focus on the business and be confident that our graphics will be beautiful and our Instagram posts photographed, copywritten, and uploaded expertly. A massive relief and confidence booster. Thanks for all your helpful marketing, Timbo. It's a joy to be able to listen and learn from such a well-produced and Aussie-made podcast. <laughs> My producer, Jamie, is just nodding his head going, yeah, it is well-produced. Best regards, David Weir, Director, Young Turks Barbers, youngturksbarbers.com.au is the website address. Good on you, Dave. That is an awesome uh, thing to have implemented, and I'm glad you're seeing results from it. As a result, you win. Access to Jeff Anderson's video marketing course, valued at $197, $50 Snackwise sample box. You win a full range of Lies Spirits, valued at $500, Lies Non-Alcoholic Spirits, I should say, $500 worth. A Sayer Skincare Basins Essentials Pack, 79 bucks. A $100 voucher to buy some tradies underwear. On the go merchandise voucher, 75 bucks. A Beach People voucher, 50 bucks. Six pack of Mr. Lee's Hong Kong Street Beef Noodles. I love them. They're 30 bucks. My DNA Test Kit, 99 bucks. You got promotion on this show and a back link in the show notes. What more could you ask for? Possibly around the world business class ticket. Don't have one of those. I'm sorry. Dave, you've done great. Well done. Everyone else, send me an email. Tim at timreed, R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Tell me an idea that's working in your business that you learned from this show. If I read it out on air, you win. That very sadly brings us to the end of episode 473. A reminder that you'll find plenty more where this came from on the Podcast One Australia app, plus my entire archive of episodes to grow that beautiful business of yours is over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. In the next episode, we catch up with a fellow whose mobile personal training business services over 2,000 suburbs and is ranked in the top five in Australia. That's no mean feat. If you're getting value from listening in, then please let other business owners just like yourself know about it. This podcast was presented by me, Timbo Reed, cleverly pulled together by the ambitious team at Podcast One Australia. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. Now get out there and take action. <laughs>